Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. March 6, 2021, the fall of the Alamo edition. While I don't have a story on that, uh, today is the anniversary of the fall of the Alamo. And in Texas, that uh, tragic loss is celebrated as one of the beginnings of Texas independence. Our first story comes from the great state of Texas, and that involves the Texas Power Commission, ERCOT, who overcharged uh, power generators some $16 billion in the recent snow snowpocalypse. Uh, and now uh, the regulars say they're not going to reverse that charge. Even though the independent body that they appointed or they asked to look at the charges flagged at as uh, an overcharge and should be refunded, the commission said it would be too difficult to reprice the energy and too many uncertainties and that uh, it would be impossible to unscramble the egg. There were so many hedge funds and private transactions outside the view of the commission that taking a step to design to help the consumers would have unintended consequences. So on the day of the fall of the Alamo, the Texas Energy Commission says to Texas consumers, screw you. Happy Alamo Day. Uh, Next up from the Wall Street Journal. In the future of everything column, forget what you think happiness is. Scientists are learning better how to measure and improve happiness as the pandemic forces many to question what brings them joy. In the future, some people believe, uh, or some experts believe, people will embrace a more complex definition of happiness that focuses less on uninterrupted bliss and involves everything from a person's environment to exercises to train the brain in ways to be happy. I wish I'd known that when I was growing up. Uh, Anyway, it's a very interesting article, and I would encourage you to read it. Uh, You can also listen to it in a special option available on the Wall Street Journal online site. Uh, Next up, uh, I've been following the Green Sill um, scandal in in the United Kingdom. I haven't written much about it, but it's a fascinating case and uh, lots of hanky-panky going on. Uh, Credit Suisse um, cut them off, and uh, they're probably going to lose multiple billions of dollars uh, because it's not clear if they were engaging in a pyramid scheme in a Ponzi or a Ponzi scheme. Also, the interesting fact is SoftBank, uh, the Japanese um, private equity firm, had invested heavily and, in fact, was uh, the company's largest investor. But um, what Greensill did was supply chain financing that uh, I'll obviously have to take a look at a little bit down the road. But they used uh, investments from Credit Suisse to loan to uh, another investor in the company. Like I said, I'm not sure if that's a pyramid scheme or that's a Ponzi scheme or that's just outright fraud. But you can't take money from one investor and then turn around and loan it to another investor. Uh, That's just uh, not a good business practice. So if you haven't read anything about Green Seal, check out this article. And then finally, uh, yesterday on Everything Compliance, we explored the intersection of antitrust with compliance. And today we have a story that the SEC alleges three AT&T employees um, who, uh, that they shared information about smartphone sales in 2016 to analysts who then lowered their revenue forecast, allowing the telecom company to beat earnings and that this insider information release was illegal. Hope you have a happy Saturday. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.